Hello, everyone. I'm Noor Sakhir, and I want to thank you first for joining this webinar. Um, I'll turn off my camera throughout the webinar, but um, please, if you have any question, um, please feel free to leave your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer them. We have dedicated um, some time at the end of the webinar so that I can answer all of your questions. And thank you for joining in again. Um, so let's start. So I'll be walking you through this webinar, driving 224 gig system design with next gen TDR solutions. First, we'll talk about what's happening in the industry and what are the requirements for critical applications. Then we'll discuss 224 gig system design and PCB design. Based on that, we will tackle the 224 gig challenges and how we can address them with multi-lane solutions. It's 2024 and we have data center applications that have grown exponentially. We have all been using AI and that has put a lot of strain on current data center infrastructure. And the things that have been there are still there, but they're evolving, like streaming. It is growing year on year, and this includes all form of video networking, like the ones we already use every day. And I can name Netflix, YouTube, all social media platforms, conference calls, and webinars like we are doing right now. 5G is also growing and 6G is on the horizon. And a major change is also seen as previously insulated areas of networking like self-driving cars, they are themselves going to need connections to networking power. All of this must be accounted for without taking away from high performance computing that is used for research and development, solving complex algorithms and engineering problems. And the market reflects this growth as it correlates directly to the amount of products that, that need to be shipped. So here we can see that Generative AI is expected to grow to $1.3 trillion over the next 10 years. And if we extrapolate this to an average cost of a switch, we can estimate how much supply is needed by the market. Because revenue, so revenue growth directly correlates with the number of units shipped. And all of this is driven by the need to train AI models so that they can be used in all sorts of areas like research and development, healthcare, and education. So simply put, with this tech growth, we need to move faster to catch up with this demand. And to catch up with this demand, we will have to shift to 224 gig surges because 224 gig covers higher speeds, higher bandwidth, it lowers transmission latencies, reduces the cost per bit, ensures backwards compatibility in terms of form factor, and ensures scalability. <clears throat> so things are growing fast, and if we paint this clear picture of the need to grow, we can see its reflection in the demand for network for network components. Let me tell you, the math works out about the same. Billions of dollars mean tens of millions of units. And as investments in AI sustain the market for high bandwidth and more data, we see that the switch and router market is set to grow and the transceiver market is also set to grow and is, is expected to reach around 7 million of shipped units by 2026, as we can see here in the graph. So crucially, if we look at the really high growth of 800G optics in the coming years, 
we know that the numbers are higher than any previous data rate. So we can basically see that these statistics paint a very clear picture of the upcoming data center infra infrastructure, and this infrastructure needs to change. You're probably asking yourself, yourselves, why this data center infrastructure needs to change. Let me tell you why. Because current data centers are being throttled and our requirements are outpacing our rate of expansion. So next gen data centers will require thousands of GPUs. Megawatts are turning not only to gigawatts, but multi gigawatts. And all this has to move twice as fast while maintaining the same form, form factor. <clears throat> and for us to bring this new infrastructure, we will move to 102.4 T switches. And you are probably wondering what will this look like? So let me paint this for you. Let's imagine how data centers look now. So hyperscalers have already standardized the 2RU form factor because it was found that 2RU was the sweet spot for optimizing thermal performance, cost, and scalability. Now let's imagine these same switches and the same data centers, but with the need to support higher data rates. And the question here is, how will this look like? As the industry moves to 102.4 T, it is crucial that the 2RU standard is maintained because changing to a larger RU count, let's say 3 RU, means sweeping changes to rack setups, power configuration, ensuring similar thermal performance, and altogether is too disruptive. No one wants to change that. So this means that one aspect of the 102.4 T gen generation has already effectively been set, and it's 64 by 1.6 T ports. This means that we have to move to 224 gig surges. Now, Testing and measurement companies like us at Multilane have to rise to the challenge of making this happen by providing the industry with the tools to do so. And one major facet we can provide support on is optimizing system design. So system, well, when I say system design, I mean switches, cables, PCBs, everything that goes into making a system. Now let's have a look at 224 gig PCB design. <laughs> As I said, 102.40 has already been set, but you know it will need some design tweaks and that will be adapting a hybrid PCB solution. And let's see why. <laughs> so PCB skew is fixed whereas cabled host skew varies with assembly, with bends and twists. But hybrid hosts offer lower insertion loss, which means better performance and signal to noise ratio. Let me mention here that per some recent IEEE contributions, we can see as much as 4 dB insertion loss improvement at 55 gigahertz. And this is when using a cable routing approach versus a PCB routing approach. And these 4 GB insertion loss improvement are actually very important because they give a ton of design flexibility to system designers who need to ensure that all 64 ports fall into a fixed design budget. So ensuring a better insertion loss and signal integrity performance means better overall system performance. It also means that we no longer need to use CGRs and retimers on a PCB. And this implies less power consumption. 
Also, moving to cabled hosts enables a diversity of GCI suppliers, making them overall more competitive. <clears throat> now, moving to 224 gig systems poses different challenges, like the tight channel margins, hence the need for optimal signal integrity performance at every port of the system. So we need to validate every port of the system. And validating each port will require simple and efficient tools to troubleshoot. And since we mentioned that cable hosts are being deployed, it is also essential to have a close look at intra pairs queue so that we can optimize insertion loss and overall signal integrity. So we are seeing pretty much the same things that we had in the past, but with the emphasis on intra pairs queue. The question here is, how can we ensure an ideally designed cabled interface to secure the ideal signal integrity performance? All the considerations that go into the design of cable switches have gone into cable design. TDR is already being used to validate cables outside of switches. So let's say we have a cabled host. I can measure impedance profile from the front end of the port all the way to the ASIC. And this gives me an, an idea about any impedance mismatch it helps me measure skew. It helps me validate traces. And most importantly, it provides design insight into both PCB and cable traces. But critically, what this enables is the potential for a 102.4T switch design. So here's where we, multi-lane, can really apply our expertise. The specifics of the 224 gig per lane generation are still being worked out, and we all know this. The standards are still not finalized. But our real skill is in moving with and anticipating our partners' needs and testing terms. And from our extensive work in test and measurement, we know, we heard, we, you know, a few points keep coming from, from our partners. So streamlining the cost of test without compromising on test coverage is the name of the game. <clears throat> so systems are getting more complex and in order to enable the industry to keep up with the demand, we need to make testing faster and more efficient without becoming more expensive. So we keep an eye on what our partners need and one of the things that they need is high throughput. And we've already seen how fast the industry needs to move to keep pace with the demand. And this demand we know is generated by the current tech developments that are still ongoing. And testing solutions need to follow up and to move even faster to minimize time spent validating and maximize time to market and deployment. And given the scale of development, especially in production, where we know that, you know, saving a few seconds per test, this adds up to hours, especially when you're testing thousands of products. So we have built our solution to test as quickly as possible with options for automation and generation of pass fail reports. Now, let's pause and go back in time. Well, I really wish we could go back in time, but anyway, in 1967, Jocelyn Bell Burnell was, anal was analyzing data recorded from a radio telescope she helped build. And she found out that there is a series of pulses that were recorded every 1.337 seconds. And this is how pulsars were discovered. Pulsars are rotating neutron stars that emit beams of electromagnetic radiation, 
And these are the first, first recorded pulses and they inspired the background of this presentation. Now, if we want to get out a lab, no, we don't need rotating stars to do so, but getting out a lab, especially for production testing, means acquiring many instruments. And we have designed our Pulsar solution to fit that mold. So we have used our own SMPM connectors on the front end so that we ensure high performance. Now Pulsar connects to the switch using our SMPM to OSFP or QDD cable. And this cable was designed to be low cost and easily replaceable. So also let, let me mention that we know that the bulk of the industry is standardized and we design primarily for the absolute cutting edge, but there are still niche applications that might, that might not call for a full four Pulsar setup. So if you're running a network that doesn't need a full 8TX, 8RX setup, Pulsar can still be used to validate them. So you can validate four channels, eight channels, uh, two channels, one channel. So you name it, we got it. Um, so this is why we designed Pulsar to be a small four-channel TDR for both scalability and to enable smaller setups so to, to still be able to use them. So we've looked at the methodology. Let's have a quick look at the instrument proper. <clears throat> so here we can see the specs of Pulsar. It's a four-lane scope and TDR that is available in 35 and 70 gigahertz bandwidth. So 35 or 70 gigahertz bandwidth brings us down to 12 or 7 picosecond rest time. And to keep things moving fast, we have scaled down testing time to a few seconds, which makes Pulsar a high throughput and scalable instrument. Now, Let's see it in action. But first, let me describe my setup. So I have four pulsars connected to a QSFPGD switch, and I use the SMPM to QSFPGD cable. And this breakout cable directly connects to pulsar and to the switch without the need to have an HCB plugged in and have all the 16 pairs of cables connected. And you know, this saved me a lot of time and spared me the frustration of bad connections. And I believe that if this frustrates me, then I can only imagine that it frustrates you guys. So anyway, let's have a look at how I run the measurements on the GUI. But I first need to mention that this demo um, that you will be seeing now is a pre-recorded demo. Here I'm displaying four channels from TX1 to TX4, and you can see the impedance profile of the SMPM to QSFPGG cable. I've set a marker at the end of the cable, so right at the QSFPGG connector. Then I plug in the QSFPGG connector into the switch, and this will allow me to see the impedance profile of the internal traces of the switch. Now I want to display the impedance profile of the internal traces of the switch without displaying the impedance profile of the SMPM to QSFPGG cable. So all I have to do is unplug the QSFPGG connector from the switch and align right up to it. Here we can see the impedance profile of the internal traces of the switch. And one thing we can do to detect failures is that we can set masks, like I'm doing here, between 20% and 80% of the trace. And we can see that all the points are within the mask limits, which translates into a pass status for each trace. Now I'll save the measurements so that I can load them later on.
and I load a reference trace that I have already measured so that I can compare the current measurements to it. And I'll turn off the channels that I don't want to keep. We have added a lot of features like averaging, smoothing. We can also add a norm offset per channel or to all the channels. And depending on the material that is used, we can change the velocity factor to calculate the distance between two points. Now I'll display the voltage graph. And this is where I can measure skew. So skew is set at 50% of the input signal and it's at 0 0.74 volts in that case. Now let's see what we have here. So skew between channel one and channel two is 98.39 picoseconds. And between channel three and channel four, it's 142.89 picoseconds. So that's all we have for now. And if you want to see Pulsar live in action, please do visit us at booth number 713 at DesignCon. And you would be really happy to help you to answer all of your questions live and see you guys and meet you. Thank you very much for um, attending this webinar. And now if you have any question, please leave them in the Q&A box and I will be answer, answering them. So the first question is, will you send out the presentation? We can definitely send it out. We will uh, have also the recorded webinar available online. And you can just drop me an email so that I can send you the presentation. What is the release date for the 224 gig version? Um, can you just please elaborate on what specifically or what exactly is meant by the 224 gig version? All right, so it's 224 gig version, Pulsar box that can work with 224 gig interconnect. So the 70 gigahertz bandwidth should be available in Q2. And the next question is, what is the rise time of the TDR pulse? So it's either 12 picosecond or seven picosecond if it's, uh, it depends if it's 35 gigahertz bandwidth or 70 gigahertz bandwidth. So the 35 gigahertz version is available right now but the 70 gigahertz version will be available in Q2. Next question is, how fast can it test a full port? A few seconds, like I believe less than five, sec five seconds. Next question, who provides the cable which goes from QSFPDD to instrument faceplate? So we provide this cable. We have this low cost replaceable cable. It can be QSFPDD or OSFP, and it directly connects to the faceplate with the SMPM connectors. It can also be in SMPS, but for now we have it in SMPM and we can um, customize it accordingly. Will Multilane also be able to provide this cable for the 70 gigahertz bandwidth version? Yes, we will. How can we download the software for the instrument? So the software is available online. And I'll send out the link. Next question is, can you add custom mask? Def masks, definitely. We can add custom masks or the pre-existing pre -existing defined masks. So next question is, can you have the possibility to do other SI measurements like SDD to one? Yes. So this instrument is a two-in-one, so it's TDR and DSO. It's four-lane TDR and DSO. Uh, 
and uh, digital sampling oscilloscope. So if you want to do SDD to one, we can definitely do it using an external uh, source, an external pulse pattern generator. We can also do crosstalk. We can also do return loss. Next question. What will impedance tolerances be for 224 gig flyover cables? So these tolerances are still being finalized. We don't have the exact numbers right, right now, but we should have them soon. And yeah, so we should have them soon as the standards are still not uh, uh, finalized. Next question. Taking account the external cables, are there a specific calibration for the embedding? So yeah, we can do calibration from the GUI itself. Uh, we can add the embedding files or do the calibration right uh, on the cables or add the uh, uh, load their embedding files so that we can uh, calibrate. So we can either run the calibration or load the embedding files and uh, the embed the, the embed the cables. Is Pulsar on market now? So we just launched Pulsar and the official launch is at DesignCon. And right after this, it will be available uh, on market. So if you guys are attending a design con, please pass by to uh, to see Pulsar um, and to see it live in action. You know, it's different when you when you see the instrument, when you feel, uh, you know, the real feel of the instrument, it's different. So uh, please do pass by if you're if you're attending uh, design con. So do we see it also at OFC? Yes, it will also be available at OFC. So design con OFC, um, Pulsar will be there so you can always pass by and check it out. Every time I say that Pulsar will be at design con or OFC and me coming from a, I just love astronomy, etc. Everything. So every time I say Pulsar will be at DesignCon and OFC, I feel like we're bringing a Pulsar, a real neutron star to OFC. But then I'm like, no, we're not bringing a star to OFC. We're just bringing our star, which is Pulsar. <laughs> so. Um, guys, if anyone still has any question, please feel free to drop me your questions by, I will drop my email again. So please feel free to ask me your questions. And that's it for today. Thank you all for attending. And I hope to see you soon. Probably maybe at OFC, I don't know, not really sure about it, but I really hope to see you. But my colleagues from Multilane will be definitely at DesignCon and OFC, so please pass by, um, get to know our products and get to know Pulsar and ask us your, your questions. Thank you very much and see you very soon, hopefully. Test father, deploy faster with multi-lane.